Hi there, uh, welcome to the Aussie BIM Guru. Uh, today we're going to be covering a topic about organizing your project, um, which is how to organize your project browser. Um, it's, it's a really basic step in Revit, but it's also a really fundamental one as well for good BIM and model management. So as you can see, there's a little diagram on the right of sort of what we're aiming to achieve in this session today. So I guess um, it, it's a best practice in Revit. Um, it's important when you're working in a company, uh, but also when you're working with a team that needs to work together. Um, so I guess, what is the project browser? So I'll summarize sort of what I'm actually talking about in Revit. So we've got like the Autodesk Revit sample project here. Um, so by default, you can see that everything in Revit's broken down into sections. You've got views, legends, schedules, sheets, families, groups, and Revit links. For this session, we're predominantly gonna be focusing on schedule, sheet, and, and view organization. You can see at the moment that Revit's really just breaking them down by view type. So floor plans, 3D views, uh, building elevations, etc. Um, this isn't very organized, so you wouldn't be able to sort this like a documentation set, for example. So it's very hard for me to figure out where my views on my sheets are on, on my view browser. So the goal here is to make this a bit easier to navigate. So a few, just a few things about keeping your project organized. So BIM models, they have a lot of views and a lot of sheets. Obviously the Autodesk model is a very simple version of something that's usually much more complicated in real projects. Um, and team, teams need to find things quickly on the fly. They're under pressure to do things quite fast. So things need to be in a logical location. And the bottom line is that users like structure and order in how they work. Um, so the goal here is to give them a structure. So um, most importantly, don't just work with what Autodesk gives you out of the box. It's good to customize to your team's requirements. Um, so I'm just gonna demonstrate a view browser and how it can be sorted. So if I go back to my model, so by default, there's two ways you can get to browser organization. One is on the view tab. On the user interface, there's a dropdown which leads you to browser organization. You can also right click on any header in the browser and this will give you the option to go to browser organization for a respective area that can be organized. So let's just see how we can create an organization. By default, uh, the Autodesk models are set to all. Um, you can't actually see the properties of it but if we make a new one, um, just a, a demo, so you can filter, so you can hide particular things. Um, so for example, you can say sheet number equal to none, and that would only show you views that aren't on sheets. But for this case, we're just gonna say, show me everything. Under grouping and sorting, um, we can sort by a variety of parameters. So we could sort by, for example, phase, and then we could sort by, let's go by family and type and we'll just okay that. Um, we're sorting in the order of view name currently. Then we need to tick this on. And if we okay that, you'll see that my browser has just restructured. Um, it's changed in hierarchy. So you'll see that we've got basically a browser that is being organized based on phase. So you'll see here at the moment, this first level here, is the phase of the model. Um, it's a bit of a strange model in that the phases are set to drawing phases. Um, but if I took this view and made it learning content, you'll see it's just jumped down, down here. Uh, then the next level, it's sorting by view type. So you can see that it's a floor plan in its type. Um, if I made this into another floor plan, so if I just duplicate this floor plan to floor plan two, you'll see now it's under floor plan two. So that's just an example of how you can organize your browser. There's obviously a lot of other ways that we can do this. Um, this, this is just a demonstration. Um, likewise, I think we'll just go to sheet browser sorting. So sheet browsers are similar, but there's a lot less that you can sort them by, by default. So we'll just go demo. So again, we can filter by certain things. Usually we don't. There's usually not a need to, um, but you can group by parameters after that. Sheets are a bit more challenging because there's not really any good grouping parameters out of the box. Um, these couple of parameters here, I'm about to go through, but they're custom. So we could, we could group by approved by, for example. Just tick that on. And you'll see they're all currently set to approver. If I make one of my approvers one, you can see that starts to break up the hierarchy of the browser. And likewise, since River 2018, you can actually do the same for schedules. 
um, which is great on really complex projects with a lot of schedules, such as um, room layout sheets and equipment lists. So again, on the browser organization, um, we'll just go to demo. Um, in this case, there's, there's not a lot you can sort them by either category, phase, type, for example. Um, so we'll move on to the next section, and this is where it gets more interesting. So this is where you can create some parameters to actually sort your views more intelligently. So if I go up to manage, and I go to project parameters, just ignore those prompts to save. So a lot of these are just default parameters. Actually, sorry, I'm in the wrong model. I need to be in a different model. This is the model I want to be in. That one's for later. So if I go to manage project parameters, you'll see I've added a couple of custom parameters here. So I'm going to add another one just to show you how I've done these. But the intent is that these are going to sort my browser. So we can do a project parameter or a shared parameter. I'll cover what these are in another session. For this case, I'll just do a shared parameter and I'll pick from my file and I'll go sort level three. So I've already loaded in sort level one and sort level two. I'm going to apply this to all views and sheets on an instance basis. I'm going to put this field under data in the properties of all my views. I'll okay that and I'll okay that. And what's happened is now all my views and sheets have an additional parameter in them. So that they can see that parameter is now available to be populated. And we can use these, these special parameters to actually organize our view browsers. So I've already pre-configured a setup called one, two, or one, two family. We'll use one, two family. So under edit, if I go to grouping and sorting, I'm grouping by sort level one, then by sort level two, then by family. So these two are actually custom. They can be filled with any text that you want. So I'll okay that. And you'll see suddenly my browser looks a lot cleaner. So I've got some sets of views. I've got a sheet view section and a working view section. And then uh, for this, the case of this model, um, I've just broken down the views by sheet. And if I go down to sheets and go browser organization, and I'll use the demo, I've actually used the same parameter, but how it's applied to sheets. And I've just said sort by level one. So if I okay that, and you'll see my, my browsers start to look quite similar. They're, they're organized in a similar fashion. Documentation set and sheet number, documentation set and sheet number. And the reason this is because the views have actually had this set on this basis. Um, we'll go one step further shortly and show you how to semi-automate those as well. So you can see just that it's much more organized and neat. Likewise, under schedules and quantities, you could go here and group and sort. And you'll see that I've broken them into audit schedules and on sheet. And similarly, I'm using similar parameters to do that. So that's how you could sort your views using parameters. From there, so we want to use view templates for sorting now. We want to actually make this semi-automatic process. So let's say, sorry, wrong model. Let's say all my floor plans in my project should have a view template on them. By default, they don't, but we're going to do that now. So we're going to actually apply template properties to current view. Actually, we'll just apply a view template instead. We'll go create one. So under view template, we'll take the architectural plan template. And what you've got in this template now is the ability to add parameters that can be applied to views. So we'll say sheet views. And let's say we want to change these and say plans two. If I apply that template, you'll see these are being locked in now. So you don't have to actually manually type these in anymore. So if I do the same for this, these are actually automatically being kept in the same place by a view template, which is much easier to manage from a templating perspective. It means that you can sort of set up your projects to be configured the way your company does it from quite an early stage. So the last thing we'd want to do from there is assign some default view templates for when we create new views. So if I go back to this project and go to floor plan, Currently, if I make a floor plan view, um, if I go to its type properties, you'll see there's no view template being applied by default. But let's actually say by default, we want to apply architectural plan, the one that we've added those parameters to. If I go to make some more floor plans, so I'll just make all of these, you'll see that the template already goes on the view 
and it already gets directed to this part of the view browser. This gives you much more organization to how your project works and it semi-automates the process as well. So I've got a recommended setup that I use in, in my professional work um, with my, my model managers and technicians. So I always recommend that you sort by a parameter when you're doing a documentation view and that's your view set. So that could be a DA set or a design development construction documentation. Um, usually those, those processes will sort of move forward a phase at a time, but sometimes they may, might run concurrently. So it's good to give yourself flexibility to use these numbers. Um, from there, the next number is typically the series and that's text. So that could be say 10-GA plans. And from there, um, it's up to you, but sometimes you might find on a big project that adding family is beneficial. And basically what family will do is it will give you these sort of views. So you can see here, this has been broken down by sheet, series, and then elevation, section, 3D, etc. Um, so on big projects, you can imagine that can be quite helpful as well. For working views, um, I usually make the first set locked in by a view template to be one name, typically WK working. And then level two, I typically make that a flexible parameter in the working view template and that will be the initial of the user. And the third level would be the family type again. Sketches, almost the same thing, but instead level one is SK sketches in the parameter. Level two is your sketch number and level three is the families. Um, for sheets, typically I'll do the same thing. So the top, the top one will be your set of sheets. So you could have DA, construction, and then from there you'll have a series as well. Um, so just some demonstrations of that in practice. I guess you've sort of seen it in that model, but here's another model I've worked on previously. This is a project that I've set up um, in my spare time. So you can see I'm sorting by overall sets. So I actually keep one at the top called control and that sort of reserves a lot of the control views, um, like your base plans, um, your synchronized to central views, etc. cetera. Um, then sheet views, and you can see I've broken it down by series and then from there just by family type. And you can sort of see that hierarchy. This Last step is basically a view with dependent views on it, so it looks a bit more complicated than it really is. And then you can see sketches and working and the sheets. In this case, this project was a bit different. I just sort it by series um, because I didn't have a phase of design that I was working to. Um, but you'd find phase of design would help you in most cases. And it makes it a lot easier to sort all your sheets, especially when you have quite a lot in a series, for example. It can make things much easier to navigate. And that, that's all for the today, um, but I'll definitely demonstrate some more things in the future. So um, feel free to follow and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to leave comments and requests for additional tutorials. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.